as we approach summer here in mid-May in Baton Rouge. Here we go. The first pitch is hit high and it's hit deep. It is carrying, 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 and dropped against the left field wall. And the runner winds up at second base. A heck of an effort. Hasty cranks it. It's bunted into the air. And the out is made at first base. Nice play that time by Kyle Cranford, not to panic. The, they, they thought they had a chance to catch it in the air. It's average 364 when he's had a runner in scoring position. This will, will score a run. It's bounced down to Collier Cranford. Cranford throws it over to Morgan, and the Rebels lead 1-0. Now, that's why I don't call pitches for a living, because, I mean, that was a 91-mile-an-hour fast. He hits it high. He hits it deep. The only question mark, is it fair or foul? It is a fair ball home run, a long one for Hayden Leatherwood, his fifth of the season, and he really put a charge into it. Ole Miss has been hitting the long balls with frequency in this tournament. It's 2-0. Now, this was one of the biggest home runs you'll ever see. This was a titanic blast by Leatherwood out to right field and somebody's going to have to call Cribs Incorporated and get a another Takata shingle out there on top of the uh, the roof in right field because something Chatagne ties into one way back it goes it's over the head of the center fielder Cruz up against the wall and Chatagne bangs a double off the center field wall his seventh and these Rebels have been swinging solid sticks here in the first two innings. Runner is on the move from second base, and he was absolutely unguarded. One in the second for the Rebels. The pitch bounced up the middle. This will score a run. Thompson charges, makes a do-or-die effort on that short hop and can't find it, and it rolls on into center field. That literally is a play you must charge and you must just make a stab at it. Not a high percentage play in terms of trying to make fielding success. Yeah, but that, he was playing deep, shaded up the middle. The pitch bounced up the middle to the backhand side. Doty's got it and gets it into the midsection of Thompson for the force out. But Hayden Leatherwood. Rips this one down the right field line. Five homers for the LSU shortstop. 23 driven in. He hits it to his counterpart in the hole. The long throw is toward the right field side, and that will be a base hit for Jordan Thompson. And again, he did it on an 0-2 pitch, as did Cruz. If they can get a fastball to hit it. This is hit well on a line, and rising, you can pucker up and kiss that baby goodbye. Josh Pearson for the seventh time this year rams one out of the ballpark and on one swing this is a one run game and Josh Pearson really put a charge into it that ball had a contrail as it left the ballpark yeah that fastball only 89 miles an hour that pitch of the, and, and Pearson took advantage of it watch how quick he is and just compact boom just short to the ball he loves an elevated fastball. He's, he's got great balance up there, and he runs that one halfway up the stands, and no doubt are off the bat. That is the third. Deliver the ball like a shot putter or a discus thrower if you wanted to from that box. And that box was in play for hasty working. The one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts by the left-hander. Hasty with a long stretch, kicks an unthrow and unfurls it. It got by McManus, and the runner is safe at first. And that has happened way too much for LSU this year, including in the opening game of the series, which opened the door for a four-run inning. Bouts. A breaking ball misses, and the inning moves forward. It is a four-pitch base on balls. Gonzalez at the plate. He swings on the first pitch. He drives it high to center field. Dylan Cruz lopes to his left. He squeezes it. 
and Hasty is able to work his way out of a hot spot. Well, whichever, whatever he said in those walkie-talkies worked because Hasty showed a lot of little gumption there coming back to get the big out. It's hit high. It's hit deep. You can pucker up and kiss that baby goodbye. Trey Morgan still laboring with an injured leg. Tattoos one into the right field bleachers. And we are brand new and home runs have accounted for all the LSU runs in the last two innings. Home run number five for Trey Morgan. Well, it's crazy to think that this ball game is tied because Ole Miss seems to have been in control. It's actually a breaking ball from Diamond. Hangs one a little bit. Thigh high and Morgan, such a good hitter. Goes and get. How about the effort by that fan out there? That's, I mean, that's showing some want to, Coach. He went over the top of a, of the back of a seat. A liner to right. That's down for a base hit. That's the one wrinkle in Razelman's game that he will undoubtedly get better at over the next year or two. And Elko is off. A fly ball to Cruz. He's backpedaling quickly, looking up, looking up. Nobody can reach it. It's a home run over the center field wall. And on that swing, Kemp Alderman moves his hitting streak to nine games. A base hit by Elko and the eighth home run of the season by Alderman have once again propelled the Rebels to a two-run lead. Now the big fella, 6'3", 265, got a 3-2 fastball. He knew what was coming, and that ball was up in the letters. Keep in mind that pitch is coming in at 97. It leaves probably at 107. That was a bullet to one of the deepest part of the ballpark. Are we talking classical or are we talking like or Billy Joel? You know, what, what, I don't know what kind. Seven in the series now. Is it going to be eight? Oh, yes. Another two-run home run for Chatagnier. His eighth of the season. That is the third home run in this game, the eighth in the series. And the Rebels have moved ahead 7-3 to three with a pair of two-run home runs in the fifth inning. This was an 0-2 pitch. And it was down in the zone, but too much of the middle. That's the thing, unfortunately, right at this point in Razelman's career is the hitters don't sit on anything else but fast. Thompson is called out on strikes, and here's Cranford. He lines one to left field. It's off the glove of Kevin Graham. Cranford is on his way to second base. Cranford is on his way to third base, and he will make it with a head first slide. And then he upends the third baseman, Justin Bench, with that slide. Bench is slow to get up. Graham is slow to get up in left field. And Graham, quite honestly, should have caught this ball in left field. Pearson hits one into the gap in left center field. This one is down on the warning track. Pearson is on his way to second. He will pull up there. Back-to-back -back extra base hits for LSU. The latter is the seventh double of the season for Josh Pearson. And the Tigers come climbing back with one in the fifth. Boy, he's so good. You know, his former coaches up in the Monroe area, Wade Seminole, Jeff Sheck Snyder, who saw him a lot, said he arguably the best swing of any player either one of them's ever coached. And as much as Mike Bianco wanted to allow Derek Diamond to pitch the fifth to get two outs, a runner at third. A liner to left field, that's hit well, but it is right to Kevin Graham, who didn't have to move much. The Rebels down for an inning or two. His first pitch is hammered into the left field corner. And Bench stops at second base. He has been trouble at the top of the order. That's his second double today. He also has walked. Here's Rally, it would be win number 34. Gervais fell off the mound a couple of times in his deliveries against Elko. Stevenson in left, Cruz in center, Pearson in right. Let's see if the Tigers can get the pair. There's the tag, the throw to first, double play. Ooh. Just what LSU ordered, but not conventionally. 
Now that. Well, I had to be in two places at one time. This ball is deep. It's way back, and it's off the bottom of the wall or the warning track, and Stevenson gets his first base hit as he extends the inning with a two-bagger in the right center field gap. Ball or a wild pitch or an error or a ball. Joe Bear is walked. Ooh, that got him. The bases are loaded. Jordan Thompson is nipped by a pitch. He is first pitch swinging and lifts it in foul ground on the right side. And the rally is done. Let's see how far this goes. It is off the wall. It stays in the field of play. And a double by Dunhurst, his first base hit of the day. And he came inches from homering. They'll automatically put him on to set up the double play. The team with a 387 batting average. He swings on the first pitch, lines it out to left field. Stevenson hustling over, but he can't get it. And Ole Miss adds to its lead. Well, a first pitch swing by Graham, and he drives it into left field. Stevenson was doing all he could to get there, but it dropped out of his reach. And here come the Rebels again with one in the eighth. All right, Graham is a good hitter. You see his balance. He's spread out. He can hit the ball hard <laughs> in any direction and got an elevated pitch up in the zone. For the second time today, picks up a base. This series started in 1906, by the way, so that's well over 100 years yeah, we're talking about. Right. Cooper will field it and make the underhanded toss over to Trey Morgan. Ole Miss adds a run in the eighth, but leaves the bases loaded. We go to the... Got to win them all at Vanderbilt. This will help LSU a long fly ball to left field. It winds up on the back row of the bleachers. It's a home run for Tyler McManus. You can pucker up and kiss that baby goodbye. Tyler McManus, who has really found his offensive stroke the last three or weeks or so, smashes his eighth home run of the year. And you could hang laundry on that home run. That's his first base hit of the game. McManus, belt tie fastball, just kind of buggy whipped it over into the left center field wall and get over the left center field wall. And he had that tremendous fall, terribly slow start. And man, as he heated up like the temperature. Base runner and then another one. And it gets the first one. That's a base hit. It falls on the grass to the left side. Dylan Cruz will stop at third. And now the tying run comes to the plate as Trey Morgan extends the game. Swing and a miss. The game is over. Brandon Johnson records the save, and the Ole Miss Rebels have that sweep, the first in their history against LSU in Baton Rouge. And the Rebels right now can claim to be, rightfully so, one of the best teams in the SEC over the last 11 games. They